what is the thing living between the two of you that prevents you from being able to be together? Let's talk about what came up. What is the fear or what is the anger or resentment? And let's see if we can process that. I am Artemis Teigen and I am the owner and director of the Artemis Center for Family Therapy. I am happy to have two of my colleagues here today, Robin Kim and Veronica Davies. So I'd like to uh, give a specific example of uh, a mindfulness uh, technique that I like to use with couples. And this is typically with couples who are really in high conflict. So what I might do is ask them if they'd be willing to do a holding exercise. And um, usually they have no idea what that means and so I get them to agree to it without really telling them what it means. <laughs> <laughs> and what I do is I'll have whichever partner is feeling most bereft, most upset, most inconsolable, I will have that partner be the one who is gonna be held by the other partner. And so I'll adjust the one partner so that they can actually allow that partner to sort of lay down in their arms and be held in a supported position so that they're not leaning but completely held, almost like a parent holding a child. And um, I make sure that their arms are completely wrapped around them so that they feel completely contained. And then what I actually do is I tell them, I don't want you to say anything to each other, okay? I want you to look into each other's eyes and not say anything. And I'm gonna leave the room for maybe five minutes. And I want you to not say anything to each other. And give them an opportunity to just learn to be present with each other mm. without being in some kind of consternation, some kind of conflict, some kind of upset. Now what typically happens is that I give them the five minutes, I come back in the room, and the types of reactions that I'll see is they're either both crying, mm -hmm. right, which is lovely, and not really able to speak, which is lovely, mm -hmm. okay? Or there'll be a tremendous amount of tension and discomfort that comes up, which then becomes grist for the mill to say, what is the thing living between the two of you that prevents you from being able to be together? Let's talk about what came up. What is the fear or what is the anger or resentment? And let's see if we can process that, right? But just doing that holding exercise where they're in contact with each other, they're feeling, they're smelling, they're, who knows, maybe kissing, tasting, touching, that piece helps bring them right into the present. And it's a, a really expedited way to figure out what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. So lots of fabulous uh, outcomes from that particular exercise. And usually people come back and want to do it again. And if I don't bring it up, they're like, how come I didn't get to be held? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want my turn now. <laughs> As you two are thinking about it, do you have other examples of techniques or exercises that you've used with children and families that have been useful? I think one of the exercises that I've done with either one child or um, siblings or even parent and child is something that actually you gave me the idea for okay. many years ago okay. when I was a trainee. <laughs> yeah. um, and that is to, it's using bubbles, like yeah. just a regular you know, magic bubbles, bubbles. and um, sort of thinking about what are the negative thoughts yes. that you're having, um, or even the positive thoughts, or maybe you're just blank and you're not thinking about anything, mm -hmm. but to whatever that thought is, blow it into the bubble and watch it float away, Right. and notice how that makes you feel physically, mm -hmm. how it makes you feel emotionally, mm -hmm. and what are the other thoughts that you might be having about it, and just paying mm -hmm. attention to that experience. Mm -hmm. um, drawing mindfulness to even the how the soap feels as it drips down your arm, right. and laughing together, how is it laughing with your sister, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and just getting them to notice little yeah. things, yeah. It, it really brings down the tension, and, and it's a form of play. So totally. that mm -hmm. really yeah. engages them. Yeah. I actually also have them blow up balloons and let them just, <laughs> you know what they do. <laughs> so we right. might write on the balloon before we blow it up. Yeah. 
the things that are worrying them, okay. mm -hmm. the things that yeah. can't let go of, and we blow it up. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the person, but a lot of them like to keep re-blowing it and, re and letting it do its <laughs> thing. Mm -hmm. And some of them like to pop it. Right, mm -hmm. which is an example of diffusion, diffusing right. from your thoughts. They're right. just not that important. No, they're, they're just not, not that. They're just thoughts. Not that heavy. Yeah. Right. I had a thought about a family who I'm currently seeing, and they've gone through a really hard time with an illness in the family. And because of the illness of the mother, the father is on heightened state of arousal all the time, having to fix everything. Mm -hmm. And he's literally not able to fix this one situation. So he's constantly, his, he's spinning all the time. So I had the whole family in one day. This was, I think, around Easter. And I bought Easter M&Ms. And we all sucked them just to calm Dad down. Oh. Was my initial thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because candy's going to be right. really well. <laughs> so as they were sucking the M&Ms, I was asking them, <laughs> What does it feel like? It feels like a cat's tongue, like one of them <laughs> said. You know how the... Uh, and it just quieted everybody down. And they were actually concentrating on the feel, mm -hmm. feeling the actual M&M, the feeling in the mouth, what, how it felt going down, melting. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, everybody was right there. Present. Mm -hmm. right, right there, there. present. Mm -hmm. They weren't thinking right. what's going to happen in the future, right mm -hmm. what happens tomorrow. Yeah right there in the present yeah and we were able to get some really good work done mm -hmm. yeah. yeah because it just brought everybody yeah. back to present back to yeah. center this is one of the reasons why using the the dogs in the practice the four yorkshire terriers is so powerful particularly with children that are really severely depressed mm -hmm. um, i don't think there's anything more impactful than a little kid walking in who's had you know major depression or dysthymic disorder for years and see them light up and be able to be present because there's this beautiful, happy, bouncing, cheerful little animal, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And that becomes a mindfulness intervention because it brings them right into the present mm -hmm. and right into their joy and their happiness and it's tactile and the dog's kissing them and they're holding them and they're feeling loved. And that is another component of mm -hmm. what we're trying to help them to see. like. If you could be here instead of here or back there or somewhere mm -hmm. else, this is what it might feel like to check into the present moment mm -hmm. with this beautiful animal, right. right? And you can kiss and hug and hold. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Yeah.